Mr. Humphrey Watanga, our panelist. We also have with us today the chairman of the Micro and Small Enterprises Association, uh, Mr. James Moreo. I am privileged to be here to give some uh, uh, perspectives from the side of government uh, on this very important uh, uh, summit that you're holding today. It's a shame that uh, I would have wanted to be here for all the three days uh, because I find every other topic that's being discussed here of immense interest to me personally and most important to uh, the government of Kenya. In most countries, the biggest impediment to uh, transforming uh, tax regimes, and especially on the issue of digitization and modernization, is one animal known as political goodwill. Luckily in Kenya, the government of Kenya has taken the deliberate decision that modernizing our tax system and the tax regime it's not a nice to have. It's an imperative. It's something we have to do. So therefore, we are already starting from a pedestal of acceptance. As a matter of fact, it is His Excellency the President, Dr. William Ruto, who pushes the extra mile and the extra pedal on the, on the front of transforming our, our tax regime. Uh, as opposed to the other way around, you know, in other countries or even in previous administrations, you find that there was will from among the technocrats, the revenue authorities, treasuries, to modernize, but um, they, they got into the handwits of, of political goodwill. And why is it important for us to modernize our tax systems? First of all, uh, there is something that is happening not just in Kenya but across Africa, and especially, especially because of, uh, you know, the, uh, whatever is happening within the uh, developed economies, principally the U.S. economies, the high interest rates, you can start to imagine that just a few years ago, just before COVID, you know, the, 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 the Fed rates in the U.S., was close to, has gone up close to seven, eight times. Just a fair rate. If the African economies, if the interest rate will go up proportionate to what has happened within the U.S. economy, Africa, as you know it, as an economy, would collapse. So therefore, the issue of debt, the issue of borrowing in Kenya today, in Kenya shilling stamps this year, we will pay 750 billion Kenyan shillings. That is just close to six, it's five billion, six billion, six billion US dollars. Thirty percent of our tax revenue will go to paying interest on domestic debt. I didn't say principal. I just talked about interest. I didn't talk about foreign debt. I just talked about domestic debt. And so therefore, the money that was collected today from 8 o'clock to maybe around now, we've just been working for people who led money to government. It is that catastrophic. And so therefore, for us, it's not a nice to have. It's something we have to do. Why? Because if we expand our revenue base will be able to bring down our domestic borrowing especially. And with the domestic borrowing coming down, uh, we'll be able to bring down the interest rate and especially uh, create an impetus for the private sector credit. And that for us is very important because it is the only way to jumpstart this economy. We have done everything we can mostly on the expenditure side. I know there's still some things we can do, but we have stretched it to the, to, to the limit. The only opportunity we have for us to grow and to jumpstart our economy is to work on the revenue side, and that's what we are doing. Second point that becomes important for us in this conversation 
is an issue of social justice and equity. That's the other driver for us to, to, to modernize our tax systems. I just speak on one area of taxes, the income taxes. In Kenya, we have got, you know, uh, you know, a very, very funny, very weird structure of the workforce. The people in the formal sector, both in the public sector and the private sector, we have got three million people within the formal sector. Within the informal sector, we've got 16 million. The three million people in the formal sector, in terms of um, income taxes, they contribute 500 billion shillings. That's close to over $4 billion in income taxes from 3 million people. The 16 million in the informal sector contribute only 12 billion shillings. For me, that's not an economic issue. For me, it's a social justice issue. It's an ethical issue. It's an equity issue. How can 3 million people disproportionately carry the burden on behalf of 16 million people who are virtually not contributing in terms of income taxes? So, what are we doing? Having realized that that is really, for us, it is an imperative. It's a must-have. First of all, we have decided that there will be nowhere to hide. There will be nowhere to hide for anybody, for anybody, at zero option. Why? First of all, we have already a huge advantage. The level of digitization, digital payments of the Kenyan economy can be, you know, uh, other countries can look at it green with envy. And I'm sure you've got a lot of people here from, you know, from, from uh, international audience. So the base is already there. Because Kenya is the only country where someone who has never gone to school cannot construct a sentence in English, but they can use digital payments through M-Pesa. What an advantage. It is better than the, the gold, gold mines of, of uh, Zimbabwe. It's better than the diamonds of South Africa. It's better than the oil of Nigeria. It is a resource that Kenya is extremely proud of, where you have almost virtually the entire economy having embraced digital technology. And we are doing that across other spectra. Last year, we were able to distribute fertilizers to 6.4 million farmers using e-voucher and digital technology to people, most of them, who are largely illiterate. But the voucher was sent to their phone. We were able to cut losses and corruption and deliver fertilizer straight to the farmer, proportionate to the size of the land holding. A very huge, very, very, very huge, um, you know, uh, development. Starting this year, every Kenyan who is over 70 year, year old is receiving money. 1.9 million Kenyans are receiving money from government for social protection. Again, using mobile money and digital technology. So we are there. It's not a big job for us to do. And because the base is there and the will is there, what we are now doing is just going to implement this. The gentleman from Safaricom has told you about uh, you know, our, our, our pay bills, our till numbers from our digital, from our mobile money. Today at KRA, the people who have uh, the you know, devices you know, for you know, for, for VAT, the ETR devices, they are only 200,000. Combined, all our telcos and the banks who are doing mobile money, we've got, you know, what we call uh, digital touch points for payments, two million of them. Ten times the ETRs we have at, 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 uh, at KRA. That just speaks to the huge, huge opportunity that Kenya has to even have what I'll call the early harvest of uh, digitizing our, our revenue framework. And that's what we are going to do. We've agreed with the, with, the, with the Commissioner General here that all those pay bills 
uh, Mr. James Mureu because they are, they are your members, they are your customers. Please whisper to them that come Christmas 2024, all pupils will also be virtual ETRs for purposes of KRE. And I know there's going to be some noise, but I also want you to tell me where did we agree that someone will not pay taxes? Maybe I missed that memo. As far as I know, paying taxes is within our constitution, is within our law. And by the way, when those people come to the tax bracket, maybe soon we can, for those three million unfortunate guys who are today paying taxes, probably we'll be able to lower the tax, the income tax for them. As our cabinet secretary for national teacher said, once we net those people, the prospect of reducing our VAT, for example, from 16% to 14% will start to become a reality. This burden must and will be carried and shared by everybody. That, take, that, take that to the bank. Second front is on the issue of Cyrus. We are operating in Cyrus. We have got just mountains and islands of people with information which makes it very difficult for us to be able to uh, even implement some of the, of the topics that I've had here about AI and all, and all that. And I, I like uh, the gentleman from the UK uh, who has said that the culture must be built. The culture of, 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 of uh, paying taxes must be built. But in our case here, and I think also Professor Ndemo mentioned that it's not just uh, getting people to use technology but to accept to pay, to pay taxes. Luckily for us in this country, all Kenyans love the rule of law. They are aware that we agreed within our laws and our constitution that we pay taxes. So the culture thing is not a problem. What is remaining is for us to do what we need to do. I know within these pockets, some people, when we try, especially to use AI, uh, we are going to uh, get into the challenges of people, you know, citing data protection and all that. But the government of Kenya is taking measures to ensure that when it comes to issue of paying taxes, even hiding behind data protection, and data privacy cannot save you. Because we are going back to, to ensure that we change the, the, the legal regime to ensure that data sharing, data transparency is, is actually an obligation for everyone who is holding data. So that will make it easy for us to be able to move to the next step in terms of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of digitalization. And by the way, uh, one of our other very ambitious projects that we are currently, uh, if you open the newspapers in Kenya, currently, uh, you'll find uh, the discussion around our modernizing our healthcare system, where for the first time, and I think unique in the whole world, we are putting all 54 million Kenyans on one digital health platform. If we are going to achieve that, and we will because, you know, we, we are embarking on it from a very accelerated pace. The next task of now ensuring that all these 54 million Kenyans are also visible for purposes of, of, of tax is not something we are hiding from. It's a reality. I know there is pushback on health. I know there is going to be pushback on revenue. But the best thing is that the government is determined and we are going to see modernization of our health system, modernization of our tax system, because for us, it is the issue of revenue where we are is an existential threat for the country of Kenya as we know it. And finally, even if we are able to modernize and to automate everything within our borders, we cannot uh, be fully successful unless we go the extra mile and go cross-border. So I, 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 this morning uh, we were, I was delighted to hear that in the UK they don't just uh, you know, look at uh, uh, compliance from within the borders. We have to go cross-border, integrate with customs uh, authorities in other countries, 
uh, you know, uh, trade facilitation systems, port community systems, any other source of information that can be able to ensure that we are as accurate and we are on point as much as possible because for us, it is not a nice to have, it's a must have. Thank you very much.